Today with Joseph Prince. What man is this? That's exactly what the disciple says when he was sleeping at the end of the boat and there was a storm and he was still sleeping. What calm, what majesty, what beauty, what peace that you and I can have looking at this man. When he rose from the dead, he's still the same Jesus. Let's all stand to our feet. Isn't that beautiful? Church, the reason we share these testimonies, listen, is never to glorify a church or a ministry or a man, is to show the same Jesus who walked by the shores of Galilee, healing the sick, opening the eyes of the blind, looking at the leper, knowing that he was there, hiding behind some rocks, would leave the multitude just to go to him and to heal him, to cleanse him and give it back his life, his family, his dignity. The same Jesus, the Bible says, is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And he's here by his Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. Today he is here, present since the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has come. He's filled many of you. And the Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than that disease that's trying to destroy your body. It is greater than the chronic sickness that you've had all these years comes to an end because he's the greater one. He lives in you. So it's not hard. The same Jesus, the same Holy Spirit, who is the one that anointed Jesus to heal, is now in you. How far is it to touch your body? Amen? Amen? He's so beautiful. Just the other day I was just reading about the, our Lord. And I, I still see a man who is never hurried, whether he's healing the sick on the way to Jairus' house. There's a rhythm and a tempo that is unhurried. And we look at our lives. We are always hurried. We are harried. We are hasty. But the Lord Jesus, He just knows His Father has all the times in His hands. The Kairos time, that favorable time. And if He rushes through the time, it will be outside time. So don't worry, God always have time. Amen. To heal, to deliver, and to put your interests first, your needs, just like He saw you many years ago on the cross. And He says, I'm carrying your sins because I love you. Amen. I'm carrying your diseases, He says, on the cross because of this other everlasting love that I have for you. God makes everything beautiful in His time. And yet He accomplished so much. You say that if I don't rush past the Prince, I won't get things done. If I won't rush my children, they won't get things done. I know, I know what is it. I have an older daughter and I have a young son, a twin. There are challenges, I know that. We feel like rushing, but just for a while, every Lord's Day, let's calm down. Go to church, if possible. Amen. With the corporate anointing, there's such a Psalms 133 blessing. How beautiful and how pleasant when brethren dwells together in unity. Amen. 
Have a prayer need? Try our special digital prayer experience today. You can access it anytime, anywhere, from your computer or mobile phone. Many across America have shared how blessed they have been by this prayer experience. We're also giving away free digital resources to encourage you in your time of need. Let us stand in faith with you. Visit josephprince.org slash prayer today. Everywhere that's watching this, I want you to know that the Lord is so close. The don't thing of Him has been so far away. He wants to touch you. One touch of His grace. And that disease is no more. One touch of His grace, that oppression ceases, that depression leaves. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is jubilee. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So right now, in the presence of the Lord, you sense that anointing. Just let go of all your cares, all your worries, your anxieties. Relax. And be like Jesus. As He is, so are we in this world. He is always calm. He always has time. He's unhurried. And everything becomes beautiful in His time. So cast your cares right now. Amen. You, you got to worry about your teenage son. To the Lord Jesus, I cast that worry and care right now. And I'm in. Let go. Amen. See this when you let go. Mentally and in your heart, God takes up your cause. Amen. If you take it up, God lets go. Right? He's not going to run rough shot across your will and take back from you. No, you've got to let go. So let go right now. Come to Jesus and tell Him, just name it. All the care I have for that quota to be, to be met by end of this month. Whatever it is, natural, spiritual, I got this bad habit, Lord. I throw this worry and care. I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to live holy. I want to live powerful. I want to live victorious over my unclean habits, over my sins. Lord, let go right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The year of Kairos, the Kairos year of right time, right place. Amen. And the verse we're going to start off with for today's word from God is Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in His time. He has made everything beautiful. Everything is everything. In the Hebrew call, the word call, everything. He has made everything beautiful in His time. And this word time in the Hebrew over here is the word ev, which I mentioned before. And the counterpart in the Greek the Septuagint version, the Greek version of this is, for time, is kairos. He has made everything beautiful in his kairos. So we are learning from the Lord that God gives times of refreshing. And literally, that's kairos. God gives you kairos of refreshing. There are seasons of refreshing. We just, we just even like specifically, we just went through that just now. A time of refreshing, reviving, reinvigorating our entire being, spirit, soul, and body. Do you know that right now, you are stronger, you are healthier, you are more energized? Amen, for having been in the presence of the Lord. You're experiencing something that the people, the Galileans, um, the people who followed Jesus, the multitudes that flocked to Him when He was here on earth, they sense, they sense the presence of the Lord, the majesty of the man. They sense the, the princeliness of that carpenter, by all outward appearances, a lowly man, and yet there's such a dignity, the Bible says, excellent as the cedars of Lebanon. There's meekness and yet majesty. I just love looking at Jesus in the Bible, and to be like Him, you need to understand why we want to be like Him, because there's no one as lovely as Him. He has no characteristic that preponderates, one is greater than the other, you know, his uh, meekness is not at the expense of his majesty. He has it all in beautiful 
balance in the holy sanctuary. When he's kind, he's not soft. I've said before. Amen? When he's zealous, he's not fanatical. For us, we go into extremes. And uh, we are all known for certain character, characteristics. Look at Solomon, he's known for his wisdom. You look at, at, at Paul, he's known for his, his uh, revelation of the church, of the mysteries of the New Testament. You look at Peter, you, you, you see a person who is very zealous for the Jewish things, for his nation, Israel. Different ones have different characteristics. All of us like that, but Jesus has all of them, all together lovely. The Bible says, all together lovely, that verse in the Bible. And I see many a times that he's not, he's not vexed. He's not easily vexed. Look at you and I. We are so easily vexed. Look at him. Every time, you know, the people will interrupt him. And these are people who are anti him. All right? These are not friendly people. These are uh, uh, people who, are, who have animosity in their hearts towards him. And yet he's never vexed. He's never frustrated. Amen. Sometimes he will speak sternly, especially the Pharisees, but he never speaks sternly uh, in that way to the, to the tax collectors or the prostitutes or the, the sinners, the common sinners of the day. It's only those who are blind that Jesus used strong words. And yet, such a beauty even in his words, even in his strong words, that gives us revelation. And a man, he's a real man's man. A man who single-handedly drove out all the money changers from the temple. <laughs> now, you know, right? Money changer and their money. No one can separate them. <laughs> Amen? He did it single-handedly. He spoke two words, follow me, and strong fishermen who have worked for years in the industry. Look at him. He's not a fisherman. But two words, follow me, that the Marines have copied, the U.S. Marines have copied down through the years. Follow me. And they left everything and followed him. What man is this? That's exactly what the disciple says when he was sleeping at the end of the boat and there was a storm and he was still sleeping. What calm? What majesty? What beauty? What peace that you and I can have looking at this man. When he rose from the dead, He's still the same Jesus. Amen. And that's why he asked them for broiled fish and honeycomb. Why did he eat in their presence? To show, hey, I'm not a ghost. I have a f body you can touch and feel, except now I can appear and reappear. There's no coming and going anymore. It's a appearing and reappe reappearing, a vanishing and appearing, vanishing to physical sight. That's our new body next time. So you look at Jesus. Even when they came to arrest him, his mind is on the, his flock, his disciples. You have found me. Let this go. Amen? As he's carrying the cross on his back that's so brutally lacerated by the stripes. And they put the cross. No wonder they had asked Simon the Cyrene to help him carry the cross to Calvary because his back was so badly lacerated. Your thoughts will be all about your pain, yourself, amen? You and I, mere you and I, we who boast so much that we can do this, we can accomplish this tonight. Look at that man as he falls and he carries the cross. And then his thoughts, it's not about himself. He looked at the women crying, he paused and he tells them, daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. Do not cry for me but cry for yourselves and your children. Amen. At the cross, who was he thinking of? The criminals on his side, right? They were actually, they start off, both of them start off, uh, you know, persecuting him, insulting him. And he said to one who turned to him, later on he repented. When he saw the way Jesus says, Father, forgive them. Forgive them all. For they don't know what they are doing. I believe that one of them repented and looked at Jesus and said, Lord, remember me. In fact, the other one was still sort of like persecuting Jesus, mocking him from the cross, and the other one corrected and rebuked the other one. He said, we got what we deserve. This man has done nothing amiss. The centurion, when the centurion saw how Jesus died, the centurion, the strong you know, a heathen centurion who doesn't believe in God, 
said that certainly this was the Son of God, seeing the way he died. Even the one who betrayed him, Judas, threw the money down and says, I have betrayed innocent blood. Even the, the again, uh, a governor that governed the, the land whom everyone is afraid of because he represents Caesar, right? And doesn't worship any God except Caesar. What did he say? He says that, I find no fault in this man. You're looking at a man that even the world, your enemies, will say there's no fault in him. Amen. But when we look at him, we see him deeper. We see him altogether lovely. To be like him. I said to be like him. I look at myself sometimes, you know, I say, oh, I still have that, that shortness of temper. I still have that irritableness. I still have that being easily vexed. I look at Jesus, not... He's not irritable. He's not, he's not easily vexed. Amen? He moves among people, but he's independent of them. They don't control him just by saying, if I say this, you'll jump. You'll get angry at me. See, I say this, you respond. You see, we're all people who respond. We react. He doesn't react. To be like him. Amen? To have peace. When they woke him up, all right? It wasn't the cry of the storm. All right, the ferocious storm that stirred up the Sea of Galilee. It was the cry of his own disciples. It's like a mother you know, sleeping through the storm, you know. The moment her baby cries a bit, she gets up. The storm never woke her up. It's like her hearing got prejudice, you know. Right? The Lord hears your cry. In the midst of the loud storm, when they say, Lord, he got up. He rebuked the storm. And there was a perfect calm. And they said the same thing I said just now. What kind of man is this? What kind of man is this? Then he turned around. Now that he has rebuked and quieted the outside calm, uh, storm, he quieted the storm in their hearts by saying, Peace. Why is it you have no faith? Why is it? Amen. And the word used there is mega storm in the Greek. I don't have to define for you what's mega. And the word that says um, there was a great calm. Have you noticed that? You write in your English Bible, there was a great calm. The word great is mega calm. You might be going through a mega storm, but he can, in one word, give you mega calm. To be like Jesus. Now, do you want to be like Jesus? Right, the simple man. Amen? And I want to say something else. He's humble. He'll say things like, you know, I don't do these things. There's a father within me. Amen? I, I don't do things out of my own initiative, but the father speaks to me and I do. And I obey him. And look at us. We're so disobedient. <laughs> Amen? We do things our own way. And yet the humility. And the humility is not like something, uh, you know, you look at a person who is like, that there is no standing, it's completely poor, and he's a sorry sight, you know, when you look at him. It's not a kind of humility. It's a humility that has dignity. It, when he is humble, no one takes advantage of him. They tried, but they couldn't. Even the disciples who lived in and out with him, you know, they say that you, you're not a hero to your own valet. You know what that means, right? It's an old saying from ancient times. No one is a hero to his valet. So the guy goes into battle, he's dressed, in his, he's clad in his shiny armor, he wins the battle, he comes back, the whole town, the whole village, the whole place, the whole country praises him, right? He's the hero. But to his valet, he's never a hero. So no, no, no one is a hero to his valet, to his armor bearer. You know why? Because they see the inside and out. They see all the, the, the temper that you have lost. They see all your irritability. Now put him properly there. Now they see all that. And we're all like this, right? But Jesus is never like that because when he's with the disciples, and remember this, they go through all kinds of situations. They sleep in every, you know, most of them they sleep outside. Right? Where you must have, go together to wash and bathe and all that. And they are together in and out. And yet the Bible says towards the end of the journey, they were discussing who will be the greatest. And the Bible says none of them dare ask him. There was that, that dignity of the Lord that they dare not even 
definitely he's not a hero to his valley in that sense. He is truly the Lord Jesus to them. Amen? Okay, Ecclesiastes 3, <laughs> verse 11. I just want to let you know, when the Bible says that we are all to be conformed to the image of Jesus, amen, you need to know what's the image of Jesus. What kind of man is he? A man who speaks and it's done. You must include that as well. To be conformed to the image of Jesus is someone who speaks and it's done. Amen. And I see that parents, we, we need this in our lives. Not force our will upon our children. Not to make them obedient by threats and bribing, bribing them or blackmail. But we speak and it's done. The effect goes right into their hearts. I want to speak more on this a while on, okay? But let's go to Ecclesiastes 3.11. He's made everything beautiful in his kairos, in his ev, in his favorable time. What is kairos again? The opportune time. A time of favor. Amen? So God has declared for us. Amen? In this church, in this ministry. And those who follow this ministry. Amen? The year, the kairos year of right time, right place. The testimonies you heard just now are just a few of them that we have received of right time, right place. I'm still receiving it. And I'm sure that many of you have experienced this. You bump into people and, you know, I, now I see it. Whoever I bump into, by the way, outside, and I go out a lot, okay, if I bump into them, I know that God has something for them. I know we are supposed to meet. You know, I bump into more than one person that watches online. <laughs> so you know what I say, right? Join us, come on. This is a personal invitation. The Lord sent me to you. Of all the people I could have met, I met you, you know? All right. We could have been like, Singapore is small, but hey, it's not that small. We can get lost. Even you try to meet someone, it's hard. Right? You, you, Somebody you give a, a, a location, you can still lose each other. And to bump into one another, come on, it's a sign to you. <laughs> Amen? So, whatever happens in our lives, as believers, this is not true for the world. That's why the Kairos year and all that, please don't start projecting this into the world, uh, into the, uh, the, the world situation and uh, the politics of the world and the happenings of the world. This are, God is talking about His people in His kingdom. Amen. The church. And the church, again, when I say the church, always learn to replace that, not with a building, but with a many-membered safe souls out of every nation, out of every race. Amen. Out of every part of the world. Amen. This is the church of Jesus Christ, the greatest organization, the dream of the Father's heart, the Father and His family. Blessed by what you've seen today? Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel and never miss a single episode new videos released daily that will encourage and empower you to live a victorious life.